Hello, Lee. Hi, Lee. Welcome to the Atheist Hello, Experience. How are you? Hi. Hello. How are you tonight. I'm good. How are you? What would you like to talk about? I'm doing pretty good. Well, the, the purpose of my call, um, first of all, uh, is cathartic for me, as mm -hmm. well as I believe it's relevant and can help people, especially the gentleman earlier who called about mental health issues. Um, I, I'm going to be telling my story. I'm a member of the, a member of the clergy project. And, okay. um, so I, I, I hope, I hope this will be beneficial to your show. Um, I grew up, uh, in Texas. Um, I was, uh, mentally, physically, and sexually abused as a child. Okay. And, and so I had very similar, uh, experiences with the previous caller. And so I grew up, um, graduated high school, um, because I, I blame myself for all that abuse. And I came to the point to where I thought, uh, where I was pl actively planning on killing myself. And I went to my grandfather's house and he was the only person in my family who I knew who loved me. I actually went to say goodbye to him and he mm -hmm. was a Christian. And that night he told me about Jesus. And that night I believed on Jesus. Um, it changed my life overnight. I went home. I no longer had a longing to kill myself. I know, you know, I cut my hair, threw out my rock and roll album, started going to church. Uh, it just totally, totally changed my life. And there's no doubting the power of religion. It doesn't mean it's true. And, and so uh, eventually, uh, as I was a member of the church, I felt that uh, God was calling me to preach. I found myself in seminary. Uh, after I graduated the seminary, I became a youth minister at a small church in Texas and uh, then eventually believed that God was calling me to Asia as a missionary. Uh, I went to Asia. I was a missionary in Asia for 12, almost 13 years. Uh, in that time, I started two churches and I pre, and of course, uh, the country I was in was a communist country, so I had to do mission work underground. And uh, so I started two churches, uh, trained many uh, ministers to go out to different villages and to do the same. Well, I, I eventually began to question my faith through a series of events that happened to me. The first one was a woman in our church. Um, she, one day, she was at home. And she was reading out of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16, verses 7 through 9, about how Paul wanted to go preach in Asia, but God forbade him to go because he wanted him to go to Rome. When she read that, she immediately got on her motorbike, rode to my house, knocked on my door, and I opened the door and she had tears in her eyes. And this is a direct quote that she said in Vietnamese, I mean, in Asian. She said, uh, why didn't God allow Paul to go to Asia? If he did, then maybe my grandfather and family could have been saved before they died. Um, I comforted her and I told her that God probably sent someone to Asia, you know, without knowing any evidence of this. But, but, but things like this is what makes Christianity so detrimental to other cultures. Because the, the new religion that I introduced to this culture um, took her grandparents. They, they, they worshipped uh, their ancestors uh, in the country I was in. Sure. And so it's an, exalted, it's an exalted position. And so I, by what I taught them, took their relatives from an exalted position to now burning in hell. So thus the reason why, you know, Paul not going to Asia bothered her so much. Uh, the, the country that I was in, less than 0.1% believed in Christ uh, the way I believe the Bible taught about salvation. And so basically, based upon just on those who would pass away each month, uh, nearly 55,000 people each month in one country alone were dying and going to hell. And I would kind of justify it in my mind, you know, Jesus said, you know, wide is the way to destruction and narrow is the way to, to paradise. But, but still with the story with uh, the, the, the previous woman and the story with, uh, you know, just, just the sheer numbers began to put questions in my mind. And then I had a neighbor who was right next door to me who I witnessed to, and I would tell him if he didn't believe in Jesus, he was going to go to hell. 
and I would observe him and he was a, he was a Buddhist man. He was a well, I mean, he, he loved his family. He, he worked hard and I would observe him with his family as he would go to work every morning. And, and eventually I began to think, do I really believe that this good moral man is going to hell just because he believes differently than I do? And right. I, and so I, I, I appreciate I, the, no. sorry to interrupt you, Lee. I appreciate the power and importance of deconversion stories, but is there something that you would like to discuss with us or ask us directly? Um, well, uh, the, the reason for my call is that I, when I called and talked to the call screener, he said that I could briefly tell my story, which I'm trying to do. Okay. And, um, <laughs> we have a bunch of other callers on the line. And I, I do think it's very important to hear these types of stories, but I don't want to rush you along. But Well, okay, okay. Well, I, I'll just end it this way. Um, okay. Basically, you know, I went, I went to Asia as a missionary to save mm -hmm. them. They ended up saving me from ignorance. And, and I, and I really believe that people mm -hmm. can relate to that because, you know, there are many people, especially the earlier caller who's struggling, uh, with particular aspects of belief. And, 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 and so I just wanted to call in and hope that that can help people through their journey. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad you called in and I'm glad you found your way out and that you're in a healthy place now. Um, and thank you very much for calling to share the story with us. And I, I apologize for interrupting you, but we do have like a laundry list of callers waiting to discuss things with us. Oh, no, no, no. So, that's fine. Thank no you problem. so much, Lee. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you for sharing with us. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, Matt. Am I still, am I still holding the wheel or do you have one that you, in particular, you like? We have a lot in there. You are the head motherfucker in charge for the I'm rest the of the show. I'm the bad bitch. Okay. Uh, uh, you get to say that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we're we're up to like jokes Matt can't tell the, the, the Seth Meyers <laughs> spinoff. 